interested in following up on that because you could argue that the apple does not fall far from the tree when we speak of when we when we talk about data science and chemical engineering. There are a lot of areas that overlap mm-hmm. in many areas, right? So, in your mm-hmm. opinion, and now that you have worked in both areas, uh, what are the main topics that you could say that 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 come up in the overlap between data science and chemical engineering? So, kind of some main things is uh, a lot of times they'll have you take like a numerical methods course, a, a course where you, instead of solving things continuously mathematically, mm-hmm. you'll solve things discreetly on the computer because that's how a computer works. So it doesn't work continuously, it works discreetly. And so a lot of these algorithms that we have to use to automate things um, in practice, really, uh, that's where a lot of big overlap is. Um, mm-hmm. Controls and even uh, some design work, There's mm-hmm. there's some overlap there. Any area where you're trying to have data and make a prediction, mm-hmm. um, or you need to visualize it, that's that's really, and it's very broad. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, but most of it is not necessarily in like the raw chemical work or mathematical work. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of it is gathering data from a real world experiment and then you're in order to do that. So like, a lot of my lab work, it felt more, you know, a lot of it felt more like data analytics at the end, mm-hmm. um, rather than, you know, worrying about, mm-hmm. um, you know, whatever mass transfer, heat transfer, mm-hmm. whatever separations, you know, mm-hmm. it may be. Um, so like your coursework will be a lot of, uh, here's an equation, we got to solve this equation, you kind of work backwards. Mm-hmm. And you say, okay, this equation models this particular instance of what we're trying to work with. And a lot of times in chemical engineering, the data science is, is kind of the reverse. Mm-hmm. It is, you know, you have this stuff and then we're trying to work backwards to that equation from the data, you mm-hmm. know, some sort of model. And some models that we have, even though they, you know, the models that we created in like the 1800s, they're not mm-hmm. all that great for certain things. And so we'll have to use some very interesting methods that we've come up with more recently to figure things out. But yeah. Hope that kind of makes sense, but it was mostly, you know, practical work mm-hmm. that you'll see a lot more data analytics, data mm-hmm. science. Because you could all, you could also argue that process engineering is also just data. If you look at the core of process engineering as a chemical engineer working with the simulations, it is basically just looking at the data. You have to yeah. troubleshoot, identify the problems by simply looking at the data. You're not really looking at a pump or a specific heat exchanger, but this one guy once told me that chemical engineering, working with process design is like working with a puzzle. And that puzzle is looking at the data and identifying all the problems, uh, how to yeah. optimize it, how to find, how to troubleshoot it and so on. So I guess it, it really oh, exactly. it's really, and it's quite interesting what you said that uh, in engineering, you're going from the equation to the data, but in data science, you're actually going the other way around from the data and then getting the, the model. That, that, that seems quite interesting. But having said that, um, because you, like you said earlier yourself, that data science itself is very broad. Of course, it covers a great deal mm-hmm. of topics. There are machine learning, data analysis, and you name it. Chemical engineering itself is also very broad. There are some areas that rely heavily on data, like process engineering, process design. Then there are some topics that don't really rely that much on data. You could argue like if you're working with polymers or you know any other field. But as mm-hmm. a core chemical engineer, let's say as a process engineer, what are the main topics that one should really go in and study on as a chemical engineer, someone who's just starting off the, the journey of the learning data science. Mm-hmm. So learn Python or R. I would suggest Python because that gives you a better probability. Once that's done mm-hmm. uh, and you kind of have your programming out of the way, mm-hmm. I would look up if, you, so there's kind of a few branches. There's the machine learning and that can be split up into a few areas. Mm-hmm. And then there's things like data visualization mm-hmm. so look up um how to do a lot it, the viz is the area a lot of mm-hmm. people call it um and so i look up data and uh, data visualization so there's a lot of methods and that one's kind of more it has a little more art to it i mean you gotta i i don't like it because i'm colorblind that one just drives me nuts because <laughs> there's a lot of charts out there that i'm like i can't read this there's no way um mm-hmm. And so, and then the other areas, data science. Now, 
uh, maybe I could kind of redefine data science, depending on who you talk to. If you're in the data science field, data science is really looking at data, analyzing it, and then mm -hmm. saying, okay, this is what we can learn from it. Mm -hmm. um, but in, it's hard because some people kind of conflate the term with others. They'll add in machine learning or even data engineering into it. And data mm -hmm. engineering is like a lot of database work. And that's getting stuff from point A to point B, a lot of data in the right mm -hmm. format that you need so you can use it. And so if you want to get into data engineering, which it really feels like process engineering sometimes, mm -hmm. you accept with, with a lot of code and database work. Um, learning SQL is a great mm -hmm. way to do this. Even if you're in data science, sometimes you know, you're kind of asked to do the data engineer's work. And you have to get the data out. You have to extract it into the form that you need to analyze it. And so like last, my last internship with Micron, I spent a lot, a lot of my time was spent mm -hmm. retrieving and cleaning data. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I need to learn SQL in order to do that. Mm -hmm. So I, I learned Python and then learned SQL. And then if you want to get into machine learning, I would look up um, statistical machine learning first. Mm -hmm. That's like linear regression and okay. whatnot and a few other methods. Mm -hmm. And then if you want, you can go into deep learning. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of the hottest field right now is uh, that's where all the money's being thrown at is, mm -hmm. is deep learning. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I would do. But okay. for machine learning, statistical learning would be first. So I hope that kind of gives some terms on what it directions did. to go. Perfect. Thank you so very much for that. And just following up because, you know, uh, a lot of people say that some languages, they are easier to learn than the other. And uh, the general understanding tends to be that if you learn Python in the very beginning as your first programming language, then learning the other languages gets a bit easier. What has been your opinion on that? Like, should people start with Python or should, it, should they just start with R or SQL? Which should be the first language that they should start their career with and then follow it up with the other ones? Okay, so it depends on where you wanna go. Mm -hmm. The reason I suggest Python is that Python can do nearly everything that R can, sometimes mm -hmm. just a bit slower, and the, the language flow is a little bit di different. I wouldn't suggest learning SQL first, because SQL is a query language. It is not a base, mm -hmm. like, coding language. Mm -hmm. um, and so, really, it's just for, it's for you know, sending things to databases, retrieving them, and, and whatnot. I would not suggest learning it first. I still think Python is mm -hmm. the best to learn first because mm -hmm. you can kind of stick with it and get more into the analytics side. Or if mm -hmm. you want to go more on the computer science side, you can dive in and then you can get mm -hmm. into C++ or, or Java, uh, which like four people use now. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but I, I still would suggest Python. It, it, it helped me understand how the computer works a lot more. There's still a lot more I have to learn. And I'd actually mm -hmm. argue that sometimes learning Python makes it harder to learn other languages. Read so different. Python mm -hmm. is designed to be read easily. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, you don't have to declare variables. You don't have a lot of curly braces and a lot of mm -hmm. other types of things. So sometimes people will get stuck on Python and it'll be harder to learn other languages because of the syntax and you don't have to worry about declaring variables a lot of the time. And those are generally core things with a mm -hmm. computer science. So I really like, I, so sometimes people get stuck with that sometimes, but, but it will help you get past a lot of other humps, like mm -hmm. knowing how a variable works, knowing how loops work, knowing how functions work. Um, but most people don't work with classes in Python, not explicitly. They kind of just have a more functional programming base. So sometimes Python will, will make it harder to learn other languages. It just depends on what you want to do. But I always suggest Python first because it opens up doors on both sides of the, okay. you know, if you want to stick with it or if you want to go into more okay. computer science. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Well, that's amazing. That, that's some very interesting points that you made there. But just like you said yourself a bit earlier, that many universities, they don't really offer a lot of data science or computer science courses, especially if you're enrolled in a chemical engineering degree. And that sadly is the reality in pretty much all the universities around the globe. Having said that, so that would mean that a lot of studying as a chemical engineering student that you would have to do in data science or computer science, that will have to be self-learning. You'll have to go out of your way and yeah. read a lot of it on your own. 
you mentioned earlier that you took a lot of courses in Udemy. And uh, if you were to suggest, what were the best sources of information that people can get their hands on? I would not say Udemy, to be honest, mm -hmm. anymore. I would say actually just YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, free Code Camp, probably the best mm -hmm. uh, channel that you can work with. There's a lot of learned data science and three hour kind of courses, and those are great for a general overview. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, honestly, YouTube is, is the best way to do it. And then just getting good. The, the real thing, the real thing to get good at is learning how to Google the right questions mm -hmm. and then finding them, you know, stack overflow or whatever it may be. And then the other thing would be that the, the reason I like YouTube is that YouTube gives you a lot of projects to work with. Mm -hmm. Any, the, a lot of people will get stuck in what's called tutorial hell where essentially you're stuck just doing tutorials all the okay. time. Mm -hmm. The way to get out of that is to get a project. So, I mean, a lot of times YouTube, you'll kind of be doing those tutorials, do that for a little bit. That's the best way. I think that's mm -hmm. the best way to get information. Other than that, I think taking computer science courses and then books mm -hmm. will be the other bit. Um, mm -hmm. Cause books will provide a, a bit of a curriculum for you, but that's really, I, I think YouTube to search up, you know, any sort of data science bit Perfect. there and you'll, you'll be able to find it. Not yeah. a big deal. Yep. So. Uh, that's a very good advice. The best way to start is YouTube. There are so many tutorial videos nowadays too. And the one that you mentioned, free card camp, that, that is one of the best channels that you can use to learn uh, data science, yeah. Python especially. Yeah.